Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Isted. This is a Contessa 32, and I'm calling this series of videos Project Lottie, as I'm doing a fairly big refit on this boat. Uh, and as part of that is getting an osmosis treatment. This is actually the third video in the mini series, if you like, of uh, the osmosis treatment. And uh, in the earlier videos, you would have seen me peel the hull, get her media blasted, start the drying out so I do lots of washing, then bring her inside. I've had vac pads and uh, heat and vac pads on the bottom to dry out the hull. I've done a load of repairs on the bottom and in this video, you'll see me re-laminate the hull, do lots of filling and fairing, put a barry coat on and then finally get some anti-fouling on it, hopefully. So do keep watching. If that's the sort of thing you're interested in, then uh, this is the video for you. As a quick recap for you, this is a mid 70s Contessa 32. Shields brought to me uh, by a customer for a fairly extensive refit. We found out once she arrived that the bottom was very, very wet and blistered. So I've been carrying out the osmosis treatment. That is well underway. I've got a small amount of sanding to do on some repairs I've had to do to the front and back edge of the keel. Uh, and then she is ready for me to lay up glass over the entire surface of the hull. Had to do quite a few little repairs to the laminate underneath. So um, some of the old seacocks have been glassed over. There were some other kind of little defects here where I've had to glass up um, just, to, uh, just to repair the hull a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, she's in pretty good shape now. There is still some dampness in the skeg back here, unfortunately. Um, I've dried out the GRP skin as best I can, but the moisture meter is still picking up some dampness, and that's because the foam that is in the skeg inside here, um, unfortunately, is still very, very wet. So I'm going to have to remove that foam, but I'm gonna do that from inside the boat, and I will do that after the uh, works on the exterior of the hull have been completed. So um, there's nothing really left to stop me from cracking on apart from doing a little bit of sanding. So I'm going to get on with that uh, and then I can get my biaxle out and all my tools out to start laminating. <laughs> So this is the bi I'm going to be using. I've got a delivery coming in today, but uh, I've got a little bit left over from the last one I did. And that's enough to get the first kind of metre and a half of the hull done. The surface is still quite kind of coarse and rough, which is perfect bonding too, but I don't want to leave any voids in there. So my plan is to start by squeegeeing on some slightly thickened epoxy. So it'll be epoxy with some silica in it um, and then I will roll on a layer of unthickened epoxy. From there I can then take the glass up and hopefully kind of pat it onto the hull, probably roll it down from the top to the bottom uh, and then fully wet that out before applying some peel ply. <laughs> So I'm going to stop recording the um, the video there. You've probably seen enough of the process, but it's all going well so far. So um, laying on a layer of thickened epoxy fills all those gaps really nicely. Then rolling on some normal epoxy, patting the glass on um, takes a bit of practice, but uh, if I've got tools nearby, I can get that on quickly and roll it out and it sticks uh, and then peel ply over the top to finish. I'll give you a close up of what it looks like and then I shall carry on. There we go, that's how it's looking as a close up. 
and uh, I'm really pleased with how that's going. Glass is wetting out nicely and what is the most pleasing part is that um, I was worried about how much material I've taken off and how much I'm putting back on but actually the, having put the glass back on here it's very nearly flush when I mean, it's virtually flush with the um, the old gel coat or the painted surface just which above which hasn't been peeled so I'm really pleased that I'm putting back on as much material as I have taken off what I do with the peel ply is I just trim it and then pull it round on the other side like this and the reason I do that is because the glass overhangs slightly and it just pulls the glass up and so you get a nicer finish on the bow here so um, once that's all kind of hardened off, I can just buzz down there with the sander. That will clean off any loose bits and then I'll do exactly the same when I go back to this side and it just finishes off the front um, really, really nicely. So, um, so I have got that area all covered in resin, so I need to go and cut some more glass and crack on. But I'm going to do that off camera because there is only so much laminating that anyone on the internet needs to see. I have just finished the port side. What you can see on the top there is the peel ply. I haven't done the keel. I gotta be honest, doing this single-handed is pretty hard work. And you have to run constantly backwards and forwards from measuring, cutting glass, cutting peel ply, sticking it on, and it's much, much easier with two people. Um, you can handle larger sheets of glass as well with two people, but uh, never mind, I have managed to get it all done on the port side apart from the keel so I'm pretty happy with that but I'm also pretty exhausted so I'm gonna go and get some food and start again tomorrow. It's now the next day and this has all gone off overnight. I should now be able to peel off this material and uh, there we go and I've got nice um, glass laid up on there and that has very nearly come back up to the height of the original um, surface. Here's a closer look at the finished surface. I'll pull it off. It's just got a nice texture on there. Ready to take some filling and fairing compound. I go all the way down the boat. You can see now it's all come together. The bit round the skeg isn't super tidy. In fact, the peel ply has popped off there slightly, but never mind. And um, I think I need to run a small strip of glass just down there. I think I just ran out, um, which was slightly annoying, but never mind. I got like 95%, 98% of the hull done. Going down the other side, you can see the bits that I've got to sand off if I pull the peel ply off here. If I take that off from the corner, you can see I've got a little bit. You can see I've got a little bit there. I just need to sand back where the glass has kind of come around the corner and set, but it's not actually attached to the hole, um, which is fine. It's exactly what I wanted because um, that's really easy to take off with a sander and then I can uh, glass up on the way down this side here. As you can see behind, I've been working down the starboard side. I have done the keel today as part of the laminating, which meant I didn't get quite as far down the hull as I did yesterday, but it is, I think, slightly easier to do it that way, and I can run the peel ply all the way down rather than having to do it kind of piecemeal. So I'll turn the camera around and show you what it looks like. As yesterday, I started at the bow, been working my way aft. It's all covered in peel ply now. Um, I got as far as the back end of the keel today. Really pleased with how it's all gone. I've got really good um, finish on it. Um, it's really smooth. And where I've peeled back the peel ply on the other side, it looks really good. It's Saturday lunchtime and exciting news. All the glasswork is done on the bottom of the boat. So you can see behind me, that's the starboard side all the way down to the skeg. And then on the port side, I have also done the keel. So um, I'll show you that as well behind me. So you should be able to see that in the picture. So um, it's all been done. I had my helper again today, Elizabeth. So she was a fantastic help. And you do get 
twice as much work done. I've also had Elizabeth pull back the peel ply and she's been sanding along the top here because um, when it comes to laying up the filler, I want a kind of completely flush um, finish ultimately. Um, and there was just the odd bit that was sticking up and bits of glass sticking up. So um, much like I did at the um, front here, she's also kind of sanded off the excess glass all the way down the front. So um, it's all looking really quite good. So um, it, might, um, it might look a bit odd because there's lots of peel ply kind of half hanging off um, because I want to leave it on as long as possible and I'll just peel it off before applying the filler which is the next stage. One of the things I've got to do is the cradle patches so just underneath each cradle pad I've got to um, do a little bit of sanding and prep and then lay up some glass underneath all of those. Just taken this one out as you can see and uh, while I'm at it I've just given the overlaps on the glass a little sand as well just because there's a very small overlap. I tried to minimize the overlap and there's a very small overlap so where that happens that just needs knocking down with the sander. I'm gonna have to do the same over the entire hull so unfortunately it doesn't take very long so I can uh, tomorrow go over that area just with the sander just to knock off any high spots there's a little bit of a high spot just kind of kind of there and uh, you can feel it with your fingers even if you can't see it with your hand and the reason I take so much effort to keep it flat is um, it just makes the filling and fairing process so much quicker if you're starting with a fairly flat surface so throughout this whole process from peeling where I uh, try to take off material evenly to the sanding after the peeling, to the media blasting, to the laying up of the glass, the whole thing, the whole time, I've been trying to keep the surface reasonably flat and fair. If I hadn't have done that, the process of filling and fairing just takes so much longer. It's Monday morning and I am back in the tent of joy under the boat. This has gone off, so um, what I'm gonna do today is take the peel play off, get the cradle pad back in there, take the temporary props out, then I'm going to put the temporary props in on the starter side back, get this all sanded down so I can knock off any high spots and start filling. I've just turned all the lights off because there's a really curious effect you get when you pull the peel ply off. You get kind of like static lightning or light um, coming out from the peel ply. So if I pull the peel ply away, you get a funny blue light. How bizarre. Must be static, but I'm making lightning. <laughs> Just finished the sanding on this side. I've gone as far as the aft end of the keel. So um, I've had enough of sanding for now. I know I've got lots of it ahead of me. So I just thought I would go that far and then I'll start doing the um, filling process. It's Tuesday morning, I'm back in the tent and uh, here's Lottie behind me. I had some recording difficulties yesterday with um, lack of memory on my phone. So you can see here, I got um, part of the way along the port side, just had to check, because um, I think I sometimes use port and starboard um, indifferently, because I forget which way around the boat is. I've started the filling and fairing process using um, the same epoxy I used for laying up the glass. Um, and that is done for two reasons. One is to make sure I've got fairly decent compatibility, although 
that shouldn't be an issue really as long as the epoxy is cured you can put almost any other epoxy over the top um, but more importantly um, with this particular product I'm using uh, if you overcoat within I think two three potentially four days in colder temperatures you can get a chemical bond between the layers not just a mechanical bond um, although a mechanical bond to be honest with you is going to be fine I've used peel ply on the surface of the glass if you recall I've ripped that off and one of the reasons you use that is it gives a really nice textured finish which you can lay up the next layer of coating whatever that may be over the top of your peel plied surface so to put the um, filling material on I am smoothing it out with these things um, but uh, I am first of all applying it with a spreader um, Putting it on with these trowels doesn't really work very well. Um, it's much, much quicker to get a spreader, ideally a nice big one like this. Um, I couldn't find my big spreader to start with, um, but uh, eventually I hooked it out of the van and I just used one of these. It's just a Commodore Garden kind of domestic spreader for fixing walls, um, but it allows you to get quite a lot on and uh, get it reasonably smooth um, i then come back with my flexi sander tools like this um, and what's good about these things is they conform to the shape that you are trying to maintain or get back to um, i've got two of them this is the smaller one and what i actually tend to do for the first one or two fills is use the big one so I've also got this monster here, which is, it has to be said, pretty unwieldy and quite hard work to use because you're moving around quite a lot of material. So it's hard work to physically push that against the hull and scrape down at an angle, or obviously you can go up as well. Sometimes up is better because the material collecting tends to stay on the blade. And then I can scrape it off the blade and apply it to the next section. It doesn't get thrown away. Um, I like to reuse it as much as possible within the working time of the epoxy that I have got mixed up. Um, and that is something, again, I was struggling with yesterday. I was trying to mix up too much epoxy, too much filler, and I just couldn't get it on the hull fast enough because it was quite nice and warm in here. Unlike today, it is really quite cold <laughs> this morning. It's um, just after 7 a.m. I've got some heaters on that side of the boat just to try and get a bit of warmth into the boat, but I can't lay up any new fairing compound on the hull probably for a couple of hours. What's nice about this tent is it has a green front. When the sun comes up, the sun hits the green and it warms the tent up really quite effectively and it ends up getting almost too hot in here, so you end up opening the doors to kind of regulate the temperature. Um, but um, I have got some sanding to do before I do any more work, so I think I'm going to crack on with that um, I need to finish sanding this port side and then I started sanding the starboard side. Um, I've also laid up uh, under one of the cradle pads some glass last night which is all cured so I need to put the cradle pad back in. Um, that leaves me just one cradle pad left to do which is the starboard forward pad um, uh, which I will do probably this evening um, as long as I remember to leave some space to put the temporary props in um, so they need to go against the hull not against wet filler because it will obviously slide um, uh, so yeah it's going to be sanding and then uh, once it's warmed up I can put some more filling material on the hull at the back here where there's a bit of uh, glass hanging over the edge of the skeg um, I can sand that off, but sometimes, as I did at the back end of the keel, what I didn't show you on video, is you can actually just cut it off with a knife carefully. And uh, poke the knife in there and kind of just run down. And it saves a little bit of sanding. As always, kind of try and cut away from yourself. There we go. Just spent about three hours doing all the sanding that I want to do on the side of the boat. And um, 
my arms are aching slightly so it's time to do something else but the main thing is it is all done which is good you can see behind me there's some kind of lines in the um, in the surface that's where I've concentrated on the areas where there's an overlap of the glass and that just needed knocking down a little bit because the more sanding I can do now just to knock that down on the kind of substrate before I start filling the less sanding I will have to do later and the easier and quicker job I will have to finish off the filling and the fairing so here's a look at it without my ugly mug in the way you can see these are the overlapping bits just here and they are now virtually flat um, which is what we want there's also the odd little bit that sticks up that I needed to knock down but that starboard side is now kind of all ready to um, start sticking some filling compound fairing compound on it and I also finished sanding this side as well so um, so that's all good to go also this filler that I put in yesterday is kind of just about ready to sand. Um, one of the good things about this epoxy, as I've said probably more than once, is that you can uh, get a chemical bond if you re-coat um, it within two or three days. One of the bad things about it is that if you try and sand it too soon, um, it's really hard to sand and it kind of clogs the paper. So it's a double-edged sword that. So um, it's almost sandable. I've done a little bit on the keel area just to knock down any high spots so that I can do some filling in the middle there. Um, but I may or may not do some uh, proper longboard sanding on that today. I'll see how time goes, but it might be better to continue doing the filling and then I'll start doing some sanding tomorrow. But um, I'll see what time allows. Here's the result of my efforts today. So I have done filling all the way down the starboard side, but I have run out of time to continue beyond the aft end of the keel. So much the same as the other side. Um, I've also done the final bit of glass under this cradle pad here. So that's good. Um, tomorrow will be a bit of sanding, I think. I'm going to start the sanding on the port side, which was the stuff that I put on yesterday. And then I will continue with the filling through the rest of the day. So um, there is a lot of sanding to be done, but using the Flexi Sander filling knives, at least what goes on there is really the minimum material. It's always best to try and do multiple little coats rather than just sticking a load of filler on and then having an awful lot of sanding. I'd much rather put smaller amounts on and then uh, sand as required and just keep filling and fairing, filling and fairing. I have done the top all the way around. I decided I had a little bit left over from one of the filling sessions and uh, it does need a fill all the way around at the top. So I thought I'd do that and then I can knock it all down and uh, keep going. Welcome back. I am back in the tent with my suit on and that means I'm going to be doing some sanding. So this stuff has been on here two days now. So it's time to break out this bad boy. I have used this um, on the previous um, osmosis treatment that I did. It's kind of an electric longboard. It's about 18 inches long or so down there, and it makes the sanding way, way easier. And what's nice is this thing here, you can see it flexes to the whole shape. So um, this is quite an expensive tool. Um, it's got dust extraction as well at the back here. So I'll connect it into my vacuum and um, it's fairly heavy, but compared against doing it manually with a long board, and I do have some kind of fairly long long boards, um, it makes kind of short work of it. Um, I'm not going to say it's super easy, it is still a massive shoulder workout so I'm going to be working fairly hard today but with this thing and a flask of tea I can start buzzing over the material behind and hopefully flatting that down to a fairly decent first finish then it'll need re-skimming again um, but I've still got some more filling and fairing to do for the first fill on some of the boat down there. So. Um, rather than me yapping away, I'm going to get sanding.
The only thing I am going to do before I start sanding is to put that cradle pad back in. The temporary supports are very secure. I'm not overly worried about it but I'm going to be pushing on the bow there's going to be some vibration and I'm just always slightly concerned that um, something's going to vibrate out which is why I use two supports not just one that's the final piece of glass done in there so I can pull that off now because I don't want that peel ply under the pad That's quite pleasing. The very last piece of glass has been done. Looks good. Well, I've just spent about three hours with the big orange beast sanding the filler behind me, as you can see. And um, that's just about broken me, although I do need to do a little bit more sanding before I can do some more filling. I will flick the camera around and show you what it looks like firsthand. Uh, there you go, starting at the bow and going down, you can see how I've flatted all that back. It's a bit of a balance between taking as much material off as possible, uh, but not going too deep. Um, you're using the sander fairly flat um, because you are wanting to get the surface as flat as possible. And you're just kind of sanding until you go through to the um, underlying kind of substrate, the glass that I've laid up here, and uh, it works very, very well. The key thing is using those special spreaders, which I will continue to use to apply the filler because that reduces the amount of sanding. I mean, the fact that I was able to do all of that surface area in three hours is pretty spectacular, even though I am somewhat broken. So whilst I have flattered all this back and it's ready for recoating, there are a couple of other things that I will need to do. So on the low spots like up here, I am going to come in here and just um, hand sand those areas just to scuff it up a bit. Then I will wipe everything down with acetone just to make sure it is absolutely as clean as possible. And then I can put another skim of filler all over this area. How many fills is it going to take? My estimate is three. I will do two fills probably with the longer filling knife and then one final fill probably with the shorter filling knife because you are kind of, it's the law of diminishing returns when you're filling on this. The long, long filling knife does give um, a really good hull shape and it follows the contours of the boat, boat really well and gives you a good kind of base to work from. Um, but it's also pretty hard work putting the filler on with the really long one. So I then will move to the smaller one because by the second and third fill, you've kind of got largely the shape of the boat back to where you want it. And you're just filling in the hollows like um, that one there and uh, this one here. And then there's lots of kind of little ones around as well. Where I will probably use the long one again is under the cradle pads because there's a very slight depression. There's very slight dimples in the hull there. It's not because of the cradle pads um, and where they're located at the moment. It's from when the boat was built um, and there quite often are little tiny dimples in the hull shape where the hull was taken out of the mold. Um, maybe slightly too early, um, put in a cradle in the factory and then it would sag ever so slightly over those cradle pads. And I've seen quite a few contestants with very slight dimples, which can fairly easily be fared out. So as I'm doing all this fairing, I may as well kind of fair out those dimples as well in the hull. They're not too bad on the, um, on the port side, but on the starboard side down here, um, I don't know if you'll be able to pick them up with the camera, but if I kind of move the camera in and out slightly, that dimple is almost exactly under where the cradle pad is. But I know it's not the cradle pad pushing the hull in there because there's a bulkhead right underneath um, basically where that pad is. So the hull cannot be compressed there. It's simply that um, it compressed when the boat was brand new and uh, um, it just needs a little bit of extra filling in there just to bring the whole shape back to being absolutely perfect.
It's the end of the day and Lottie has lost her neighbour temporarily, so that allows me to give a slightly better view of how she's looking. So I did an awful lot of sanding this morning, did both sides as far as the aft of the keel. Um, I haven't done the very back end of the boat because I decided I wanted to um, give my shoulders a rest and do some filling instead. So um, that's the starboard side that's been filled as far as you can see, so not quite to the back edge of the keel. The opposite side, port side, has been filled. So it's had its second fill kind of to the middle of the keel, um, down from the waterline. So, um, so that is uh, one sand and two fills. That is one fill and one sand, and that's just one fill yet to be sanded. So. I would say I am approximately a third to a half of the way through the filling and fairing phase, if you like. It's another day back in the tent and I'm holding the mic up because it is absolutely pouring with rain outside with thunder and lightning and the whole thing. So um, I hope there isn't too much noise of the weather outside on the microphone, really sorry about that. Um, behind me you can see I did finish up the sanding round the back of the boat and I will flip the camera around and I'll show you what it looks like. So this back end has had its first fill and its first sand. I just need to do, oh, that was that uh, thunder I mentioned earlier. I've got to do a little bit of hand sanding just around the prop aperture, but uh, the bulk of the heavy lifting in terms of the sanding at the back here is done. So that's ready for its second fill. I've got a little bit of sanding I'm going to do in a minute here, which is uh, the second fill. Uh, I've just got to finish that off. But up here at the front where it's had its second sand of the second fill, you can see there's a slightly lighter skim of filler over the low spots, over the top of the slightly darker filler. Um, that's one of the nice things about making up your own kind of filler is you can uh, change the quantities slightly to get slightly different properties, but you also end up with a slightly different color, which kind of makes seeing what you have sanded and what you haven't sanded and the different layers of filling material. Um, it kind of makes it obvious where it's ended up and what you need to remove. So um, that's really good. But what's nice about this is this is super, super, super smooth now. I'm really, really pleased. That needs very little additional work. The only thing I have noticed is right at the top here, I've still got a very, very slight ridge so um because i've been pulling the filling knives down kind of that way mostly along the top there um i've not got rid of the slight ridge that is there so i'm going to run kind of all the way along the top i think today once i've done the sanding um with the flexi sander knife or filling knife um going that way uh and that will hopefully bring the shape back up to where it should be but that front piece there that's had its second fill and second sand is very, very, very close to kind of being finished. I've still got a whole bunch of sanding over this side. Lottie does have a new neighbour next door, so um, the yard here are doing a uh, re-copper coat job on that um, boat next door. One of the last things I did before finishing up the other day was to do the initial bond on the transducer housing. So you see there's a a bronze fitting just in here. Uh, that just needs a little bit of fairing in. It made sense to glue it in now because I'm doing a whole load of fairing. I'm putting my hand behind it so that the camera will actually focus on uh, kind of what it looks like. So um, that's bonded in just on the outside. I'm going to do some more bonding in or for it on the inside. Drilling the hole for this so that I could get it back into exactly where the old uh, transducer housing was was quite tricky as it turns out because on the inside of the boat I had planned to just drill down because I could see where the old transducer still was I hadn't cleaned up all the inside completely so there was enough evidence there that I could drill back through and put it exactly um, on the center line of the boat and uh, through the hatch but unfortunately because of this hatch in the floor I physically couldn't fit the drill with a hole saw down because the, um, the end of the drill wasn't long enough and I wasn't going to go off and buy an extension just to do this one job. So my solution after I thought about it for a few minutes was to drill from the outside 
but to get it in exactly the right place, I got one of my big work lights that um, I use inside the boat. By shining that big work light down from the inside, I could see from the outside quite clearly where the old hole was. Um, so with that, I could take my uh, drill and hole saw and drill up from the outside to the inside and then looks back on the inside and it's exactly centered where the old transducer housing was. So the key thing is it's in so I can continue with the fairing and I can put a nice bit of fairing material around the housing here and kind of make it all look nice and streamlined. Um, one of the difficult things on these boats is working out where to put the um, speed transducer. Um, they were originally through kind of the side of the boat, which kind of works well when the boat's upright and it works okay on one tack, but it massively underreads on the opposite tack when you're going upwind. Um, so having it on the center line does seem to be the best solution, uh, unless you go for a two transducer option and have a, a changeover switch. Um, which is um, what some boats will have. Particularly on uh, catamarans, you might have a speed transducer in each hull, and it will be the downwind hull every time that uh, automatically gets switched over to on the instrumentation. Um, that is a bit too um, complicated for a Contessa, really. So a central transducer housing generally works pretty well. Um, it can still slightly underread and overread on one tack or another because the paddle wheel on the triducer isn't absolutely central in the transducer um, but um, there are ways to overcome that. Welcome back to the tent of sanding and filling and aching shoulders. It's all going well in here. I didn't do any recording yesterday, but um, it was much the same. It was sanding and it was filling. And round the back here behind me, you can see the aft end of the boat got its second fill. And I am just about to, if I can walk around the boat looking at the screen without tripping over anything. Um, you can see it's had its fill up to about halfway there. Um, I am going to now put the third fill on the front end of the boat. It is, to be honest with you, virtually there. I could almost, I'm running my fingers over it um, all the time just to try and find imperfections. It's very, very nearly there. I could almost say that's good enough, but um, I want it to be absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna stick another skim of fill over there using the Flexisander long filling boards and then sand that back. And then hopefully that's gonna be enough. Yesterday I got the third and what should be the final fill on the front half of the boat. To be honest, most of what I was putting on, probably 95% of what I was putting on the hull, I was scraping back off again with the um, with the filling knives and uh, the other sort of three to five percent will probably get um, sanded off because it is really really very flat now there's just the odd little ripple that I wanted to fill so that's basically done once it's been sanded at the back where it's had its second fill I have um, got to sand that back I tried to give it a little sand yesterday but the material hadn't been on there quite long enough and whilst I could have sanded it it was going to be kind of hard work so I decided it was better to leave it until it had really cured a little bit more and that's today's job um, so more sanding yay um, but what I did do because there is one important piece missing from this boat is look at the rudder because I hadn't actually peeled it it was slightly osmotic and slightly blistered it was also a very slightly odd shape so I thought I'll get that out of the workshop and peel that and see what it looks like. Here is the rudder freshly peeled. Um, so I took it outside just to um, save some mess in here. Got peeled and then I ran over it with the uh, sander just to knock down any high spots. As you can see, there was quite a lot of filler in this rudder and it has had a few repairs. It's the rudder, as you can see, it is not in the first flush of youth. I'm pretty sure it is the original rudder for the boat based on how it looks. The first thing I noticed when I was peeling down the rudder is there was some damage to the back end of the rudder here. And um, on the other side, it's in slightly better condition, but on this side, um, as I peeled down, this new laminate that has been put onto the rudder has um, detached so I, uh, once I peeled it and once I sanded it all back I got my angle grinder out and I started just doing a little bit of an investigative grind back here so I think my guess my theory is that the boat possibly has blown off its mooring or something like that 
um, under a previous ownership and that's where the keel got damaged and at the same time the rudder possibly got damaged as well. It's just a theory, it's a complete guess. Um, but this back end of the rudder, I suspect, has been completely mashed. They've cut it off and then they've put in a new piece of rudder here and shaped it roughly to the right size and laid up some glass over it to repair the rudder. So um, that is going to need a bit of attention. The other thing that I noticed that isn't so maybe obvious on this side, but I'll flip it around, but you can see where someone has cut some access holes into the rudder. So um, running down here, you've got the rudder stock and then coming aft, you've got two metal tanks which are either welded on or located into holes in the rudder stock and then potentially welded at the same time and if it's just welded those wells, welds have been known to fail from time to time particularly on much much older rudders and you know this is nearly 50 years old now so um, what sometimes happens and what I have done on other rudders is I've cut a big access hatch into the rudder here and then that allows me to go in and check the condition of those wells or potentially um, if it isn't welded and it's just located I've you know, had some welding done just to make sure it is fully strong enough for use and then rebuild the skin. So someone has done that here. They've not done a brilliant job of it, but you know, it's kind of okay. Um, that can dry out and I can just um, lay up some glass over the top of that just to tidy it up. But um, repairing what's going on down here is probably going to be the bigger job. This glass, as I said, is reasonably well adhered. It's not too bad, it's slightly, misshapen it doesn't fully follow the um, shape the rubber should be but it's close-ish um, on this side I am going to have to I think get busy with the um, grinder and I'm going to have to probably remove all this filler because I want to dry out the laminates in much the same way as I dried out the laminate on the hull of the boat so if this is epoxy filler which it might be, I don't know, it kind of smells like poxy rather than polyester when you grind it, so um, that is potentially going to be holding moisture into the laminate, so um, that one needs to come off and then it can be washed many times and dried with the heat and vac pads exactly the same as the hull. This I'm going to have to grind back and um, possibly do a slightly better job than um, is currently on here. Um, just because I'd quite like to get the rudder back to being a normal profile. Another option for the owner is to just buy a new rudder and um, I would have suggested that if the rudder was in worse condition but the fact that someone has gone to the effort to check or potentially repair the two tangs in the rudder uh, and those have been repaired and the rudder stock itself, whilst it's dirty, it's not massively corroded, there's no obvious crevice corrosion, so I think this rudder's salvageable um, and uh, you know a lot of money has been spent on the boat in other areas, so if we can save this rudder and keep it going, certainly for another few years, then I think that's what we're going to do. Just before I get on with the sanding, here's a close-up of that damage at the bottom. And going up the rudder, you can see how it looks. You can see where there are a few blisters on the surface there that I've popped open with my pressure washer. They were just below the surface and uh, I've got a fairly powerful pressure washer and it's um, opened up all those blisters quite nicely. And the other side, you can see those repairs, one top, one kind of halfway down, full of filler where someone's been in at the tangs inside the rudder. But I think that's salvageable, that rudder. We can do something with that and get it back on the boat. It's been another ridiculous day in the tent of filling and sanding and filling and sanding. Because it is just filling and sanding, I haven't done much recording. I hope you don't mind, but I'll show you what I have been up to. So here's the starboard side. I basically sanded all the way down the starboard side all the way to the back of the boat and then I carried on sanding back up the other side to about halfway 
Um, now that was the second fill on the back half that I was sanding. It was the third fill on the front that I was sanding. I've then put the third fill on the back half of the boat here. So that is curing and is ready, hopefully going to be for sanding tomorrow. Front half the starboard side has had its third fill sanded and that is pretty much ready to go. I'm really pleased with how this has fared in. So this is the new log transducer housing. So um, it's nicely sanded on that side. This side is awaiting sanding. This is all hard. So uh, first job tomorrow morning is to get back on the sanding. I'm going to have to do about halfway down the port side of the boat here. And then I'm pretty much going to say it's done. I have just spent the morning sanding all the way down the port side you can see behind me. So that is the third coat of filler sanded all over the port side. I've still got a bit of sanding to do on the starboard side at the aft end but I've kind of had enough of sanding and it's nice and warm in here so I'm going to do a little bit more filling. So you can see behind me I've just pulled out the cradle pad on that aft corner so that needs its first fill under there it's had glass so uh, it needs its first fill i'm hoping that i can get away with doing two fills under there but what i'm also going to do because i am struggling now to find the defects but i know there are one or two there back here is i'm going to put effectively a guide coat over the surface so what i have purchased is some white um epoxy coloring colorant um oh, it's a pigment um, that you can put in epoxy. It's made by the same company that um, make the epoxy that I'm using. And what I'm gonna do is just gonna roll that on kind of like paint. And because it's the same epoxy, again, I'm gonna get the same benefits of it all curing together nicely with no issues. So I'm gonna put that on, let that cure, and then I'll be able to much more easily see any defects in the hull. I can buzz over it very quickly. Any high spots, you'll just go straight through. Any low spots will remain shiny. So it just means that I can swap any last minute little bits and bobs that need filling and fairing before the barrier coat goes on. Now I could do that um, extra coating with the barrier coat itself, but it means that I'd be putting any filling material that I need to put back on kind of on top of the first coat of barrier coat, which is actually kind of okay, but I just like the idea of having the same epoxy material all the way through to the barrier coat and then just having the barrier coat with no other filling material in between the layers of the barrier coat. It just seems like a better way of doing it and it's the way that I wanna do it and that's why people kind of use me because I do it the George way and not necessarily the quick way. I have just about done as much as I'm going to do today, but you can probably see some fairly big changes behind me. So I'll show you what I have been up to. The biggest and most obvious change is obviously that she has gone white. I started the day by doing quite a lot of sanding just to finish off the third sand of the third fill. So I then cleaned everything down and have used some white pigment in the same epoxy again uh, that I've been using throughout the whole process and have applied that with a roller. So I've gone all the way down both sides with that coating and uh, some of it's already cured because I did it just before lunch. The rest I've done this afternoon and it's all looking nice and shiny. That um, is effectively going to be a guide coat that I can sand through and by sanding through the white it will make it really really obvious where any low spots may be so that's kind of what it looks like right now the other thing i've done i've just walked past it is i've done the first fill under that cradle pad so um, that's got some temporary props in and to save me time when it comes to doing the front pads you can see that i have a second cradle so they've started calling me two cradles listed in this yard now um, so i can put the forward pads of the second cradle up under the boat and support it and then i can release both the forward pads on the cradle it's been sat in for the last few weeks and i can do both sides at the same time so that does kind of half the amount of time it's going to take to do the front two pads the back ones i will just do as normal so i will um pull the cradle pad out having put a couple of wooden props in and uh, I can do that one after I have done the one on the other side. 
Weirdly enough, the most pleasing part of this whole project has been um, fairing in the housing for the transducer. You can see that's looking, looking lovely and smooth and rounded. I'm really quite pleased with that. That's turned out nicely. And the curves kind of match the curves of the boat because they are kind of curvy ladies, these Contessas. They look lovely underwater. The tooth cradles have been ratchet strapped together so they definitely don't move and you can see the forward cradle is now in use and I've been able to drop down the uh, cradle pads that needed filling and fairing so they've had a sand, a clean and a fill on both sides. Uh, the one at the back has had a sand and a second fill and I'm about 99% confident I'll be able to just give that a buzz over tomorrow and be able to call that done without it needing a third fill, which is good. I did start doing some of the sanding on the uh, the white here, um, but um, as it turns out, you can have too much of a good thing when it comes to sanding and I just wasn't really feeling in the mood for it today. So I've been doing a few other jobs. So the bottom of the keel down here needed a sand. So that's had a uh, sand back and a fill. I know that the, uh, or I knew from looking at it previously, the back edge of the keel needed just a little bit of a fill there. And there was a very slight hollow here, which I wasn't happy with. So that's been sanded and had a fill to uh, sand back again tomorrow, just to get that absolutely perfect. And the other thing I needed to do at the back here was to lay up some glass just in there. So the aft end of the skeg where the rudder would normally sit, um, it wasn't very pretty in there. So I decided that um, as with the rest of the hull, that would get a layer of glass. It's got peel ply on it at the moment. And then uh, tomorrow I'll rip that off and maybe just give it a very, very light skim of filler just to call that piece done as well. I didn't do that initially because I did have a very small amount of water coming out of here, but that eventually stopped and it had been stopped for a few days. So I think whatever water was trapped in there has now long since gone and dried up. So it's had a really good scrub clean with acetone and uh, had some glass laid up. Here you can see I've given the first fill under the pad here. It's first sand and it's looking pretty good. There is, as to be expected, a few little bits and pieces that need a second fill, but it's reasonably smooth as I run my hand down it. There's no obvious issues there which I'm gonna have to deal with. So I'm hoping, like the pad at the back, I'll be able to get away with just doing a second fill on this uh, and the sand and it'll be done, but time will tell. Here's the port aft cradle pad back in. I gave that a sand this morning. I'm really pleased with how that's turned out after just two fills. So um, that is done. And I have moved around to the starboard side. That cradle pad has come out and it just needs a little bit of a sand just because there's a few little high spots on the filling material around it. Then I wipe down with acetone and then that can get its first fill. And at the same time, the pads out the front will get their second fill. Here's the starboard side and you can see it's got a little bit of a low spot there and um, if I run my hands over it I can just feel there's a bit of a ridge there. I might knock that down a little bit more. I think that must be a overlap in the glass which perhaps didn't get as much of a sand as it needed. Um, so I might just buzz over that and then it will get its second fill and then we're nearly done on the filling. I've also got to sand these little patches back as well. So I'll get around to them a bit later on today. So there's the second fill on the port side and coming around here, there's the second fill on the starboard side. You can see I've highlighted in green the odd little patch that needs another little tickle with some fill. And then there's the first fill on the starboard aft area under the cradle pad there. I've also just trimmed the glass down that I put around the skeg. Needs a bit more of a sand and maybe a little squeeze of fill around there as well. 
Now I'd hope to finish this video with the bottom being completely done, but um, I'm also wanting to get a update video out tomorrow. So I am going to call it a day here and uh, there will be a fourth video in this trilogy, making it a quadrilly or something. I need to look that up. Um, so it's gonna be a trilogy plus one for the osmosis treatment, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Do ask questions or make comments down below in the bottom. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Hopefully it's been uh, a bit of a fun watch and not too boring. I've done an awful lot of sanding over the last few weeks. It's been an absolute body workout. So um, I'm very pleased that the end is so very nearly in sight. So I've just got to finish off these little patches and um, a few other little bits and bobs, and then she's gonna get her barrier coat and some uh, copper coat, I think, is what we're going for on the bottom. So stay tuned, watch on the next episode for the continuing saga of Lottie's Bottom. See you next time.